Good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing a mini review on a Hitohira Togashi Kasumi 240mm Hitotsuke Gyoto. I know that's a mouthful. If you guys don't know me, my name is Franco Allo and this channel is all about knife knowledge, unboxings, reviews, and head-to-heads. So, what is a mini review? Well, this knife is not my own. It was sent to me by Philip Yu and so I'm calling it a mini review because I don't have a whole lot of time to have this knife in my possession and so rather than being a full-fledged review, it's a review that essentially consists of me using the knife, my thoughts over maximum a week, and you gotta remember, I have a day job just like all of you too, so I'm not using the knife 24-7. I've probably used it for max 30 minutes of prep time, so that's why I call this a mini review. Now, Hitohira, for those of you that don't know, that is a house brand. It's a little bit like saying Masakage Knives, which is a creation of Takayuki Shibata. Hitohira is a house of knives. It is a master house brand, which encompasses many different blacksmiths. In this case, the blacksmith we're talking about is Kenji Togashi. Kenji Togashi is a master smith from Sakai, being renowned for his Honyaki blades. You can imagine if he has the type of skill that has gained him the accolade of Dento Kugeshi, which essentially means the highest honor for Japanese craftspeople in Japan, that any type of knife he makes that even isn't a Honyaki, he will bring that same level of skill to any of his knives. Now I know you all like when Becca is here on this channel too, and so we made sure that she got her hands on this knife. Typically she doesn't even like using a knife I don't know, above 165, 210 max, so using a 240 really put her outside of her comfort zone and if you want to know if she enjoyed this knife, she will be here after I show you the knife demos. Before we dive in and talk about what this knife is made out of, its price point, if ever you like the content that I put out for you, please consider liking and subscribing. Hit that bell so that every time I post you will be notified. And of course, if you want to continue conversations with me, I am most active on Instagram. So check me out on Instagram at TheFrancoAllo. All right, let's dive in. Thank you very much, Becca. The knife from Kenji Togashi and it is of the Hitohira brand. The knife line in itself is called Togashi Kasumi. It's a 240 millimeter Kiritsuke Gyoto. Now the reason it's a Kiritsuke Gyoto and not just a Kiritsuke is because traditionally a Kiritsuke is single bevel and if you take a look at the profile of this knife, it isn't perfectly flat in terms of the belly, the cutting edge like a Kiritsuke would be. It also has a lot more belly height than the Kiritsuke would have and so Kiritsuke Gyoto really just entails that it has a K-tip and that it has a similar profile to a Kiritsuke, but in terms of cutting style, it is more similar to a Gyoto than it is a Kiritsuke. In terms of coarse steel, we're looking at Shirogami White Steel Number no. 1 with a soft stainless clad. The handle, of course, this is coming from Kenji Togashi, so it's going to be as premium as his Honyaki blades. We are talking ebony and buffalo ferro. There is no Saya included, it has a Kasumi finish. And if you take a look at the price point of this knife, it is 875 Australian dollars, which I believe is roughly 750 Canadian dollars. For you American friends, sorry, not sure what the conversion is in my head, but of course these days with inflation, I'm sure it's probably a little bit different. Now, though it is advertised at 240 millimeters, it really has 228 millimeters of blade edge length. Because I wasn't sure what condition the knife was sent out of Philip Yu's house, I did take a look once the knife arrived for any micro chips or larger chips. There was nothing there, but for safe measure, I strapped it on a piece of leather as well as using Rick's white lightning compound to make sure that the edge was as straight as possible. So now, what do you say we dive into those knife demos? Then we'll come back and we'll share our thoughts.
So Philip had a special request that he wanted both Frankie and I to try it just to get different perspectives. So as Frankie mentioned before, I prefer knives around the 165 millimeter range. Um, I just like smaller things in my hand with smaller hands. And anything over really, I'd say 180 starts to get a little big for me. I have a 210 Type 3 Gyoto from Shibata, which I love but don't use as much because of the length. And so the 240, I was a little nervous about because that's way over what I would think. But honestly, I really didn't notice it all that much when I was cutting the peppers. Um, it was definitely heavier in hand and I prefer lighter in hand knives. Um, but it wasn't so heavy compared to say the Shark Tubes, the Deba, or just any Deba really, where it was a hindrance and it cut through everything very very nicely so I actually liked it a lot more than I thought I would it was good so there you have it you heard Becca's thoughts now what did I think of course you know me when I take a look at a knife when I unbox a knife I notice the handle first this handle is premium quality it is very nicely finished I did as the name of the knife suggests did immediately notice the Kasumi finish which is really beautiful I personally am really into Kiritsuke's um, there's one here to the left of the frame, which is of course very blurry. That is my Konosuke Fujiyama 240mm Kiritsuke, and that is by far one of my favorite knives lately. So this knife is no different in that just the K-tip in itself, looking at it, does attract me. But how did it perform? I have to say, my, my thoughts, my um, takeaways, the biggest takeaway has almost nothing to do with performance, but everything to do with comfort. This knife is so incredibly comfortable to hold in hand. When people ask me what my favorite knife of all time is, it's been the same answer ever since I got it. My 210 millimeter Fujiwara Denka Gyoto. And then of course I'll hear back, yeah, but the fit and finish is so rough. Sure, but it's so comfortable in hand and so too is this Togashi Kasumi Kiritsuke Gyoto. It's extremely comfortable. I, I, I can't explain it other I can't explain it better than that than to just tell you that using this knife throughout a slew of different produce was a joy. I loved that it was a little bit forward heavy, again because it was so comfortable it didn't feel uncomfortable to have a forward heavy knife and it dealt with most of what I put in front of it quite well. Of course as you saw with the tomato test that's always a test I like to do, a super turgid cherry tomato where the skin is really tight and what do you need to cut through? A cherry tomato that's super turgid with tight skin, well, you need a little bit of bite on your edge. So that is not a diss against the knife itself. All I have to do is maybe put a different finishing edge, probably my classic Shapton Glass 1K edge, and it would have done a better job on the tomato. But again, going back to the performance of the knife, how comfortable it is, that too is important when I rate my experience with a knife. So extremely comfortable, 240 millimeters, like Becca said, also to me did not feel extremely long. I'm also most comfortable around 210. I have kind of dilly-dallied a little bit with the 240s, mainly the Kiritsuke I just mentioned, and of course you also know I am deeply in love with my Takamura Uchigomo no Hana 240 millimeter Gyoto. But other than that, I will use blades that are longer than that length for specific uses like a Yanagiba. So this Togashi was fantastic. It was great to look at. It wasn't too reactive. What I really like too is that the Shinogi line on this knife is actually quite high. And so you have a spine that isn't ultra thin, but it can be thicker at the spine because by the time you get to the Shinogi, which isn't a great travel length, right, on that flat bevel, then you have a lot more length to go to bring it to a needle point, which is what this Togashi essentially does. Now, that being said, that reminds me, I would say that probably the pitfall to me of this knife, A, the price, it's not for everyone, it's quite expensive, 
despite it being a fantastic knife from a master blacksmith with an accolade that not many other Japanese craftspeople have, but the edge did feel a little bit brittle to me. A little bit like my Denka, to be honest. It was a joy to use. I do use it on my large wood cutting board, so edge resiliency is as high as I can get it. You know, it's gonna depend on the steel that I'm using, but then also the cutting surface. But in the end, after using it for about 30 minutes, when I gave my feedback back to Philip, I said, this is a great knife, but I would wanna put maybe a bit of a micro bevel on it. I would just be afraid that at any given time, it might chip because it feels brittle. Whether it is or not, that is also a completely different story. Remember, when you're using your knives, everything is important. The look, how it makes you feel, how you feel about it. Is it comfortable in hand? Performance, edge resiliency, edge resistance, corrosion resistance, right? Pick and choose your property of choice. Point is, I absolutely loved using this knife. Thank you for stopping by and watching this mini review on this Hitohira Togashi Kasumi 240mm Kiritsuki Gyoto. Hold on, are you guys about to leave? Because I just remembered something. If you remember a few months ago, I did a rebranding. If you're interested in purchasing some of my stickers, come meet me on Instagram at DaFrancoAllo. I am selling them everywhere across the globe and I'm selling them at a price that is so affordable. I am not trying to make any money off of these. I'm selling them at a price point that makes sense to ship them to you, whether you're in Canada, the USA, or anywhere else. So please support me if you like this little cat logo. And until then, see you next time.